kind of get started. Um, thanks for coming, and this is just a way to share more about Family Promise. Many of you know a lot about it, but it just sort of gives an overview as we prepare for the summer. We're hoping to either this summer or fall, we don't know what our first hosting week will be, but we're preparing for that. So as you all saw in the bulletin a couple weeks ago, we had planned to open in April, but uh, we lost our director that we hired in January, so it was sort of not the best fit, and um, we are now kind of looking for a new director, and so therefore we're delayed. But we are still going strong in terms of all our work at the day center and getting things started, so um, it will happen. If you know of any potential directors out there, definitely send them my way, and I can tell them more about the position. Uh, but this morning, we'll go through sort of like macro to micro, so talking about family promise in a broad sense, and then narrowing down to our local <coughs> chapter and our church and what that will look like. Um, and then we'll have time for discussion and questions afterwards. Um, but before we fully launch into this, we wanted to give Bruce and Paula a moment to share about their experience, because they were with the Family Promise host church in Colorado before they came here and they actually coordinated the host church's uh, work there um, in, in their host weeks and so they have been very useful to us in sort of helping us figure out what we might do here. So do you all want to share for a moment? Yeah, uh, so what I often tell people uh, in regards to the Family Promise work that we did in Colorado Springs is that when I come to the end of one of those weeks where we had hosted the families, it would be, I'd be just exhausted. Uh, Paula and I helped coordinate it. But on the other hand, I would be incredibly, just an incredible warm feeling inside as well that, that something good had happened that week. I mean, it was one of those combinations of tired, but wow. That was really, really worth it. Um, so we were involved, the church was involved for many years. Uh, we supported another congregation, and then when we built a new building that had enough room for the families to stay there, then we opened up for families to come. Um, just in general, one of the cool things that I thought was it made our church building feel like a home for that week. People be spending the night living there, eating there, and there was something special about that for me that, that kind of turned the church building into, into uh, a family space, a home space, and I really appreciated that. I think of many, many stories of individual families and people that we connected with, but one of the cool ones for me was one of the families that came in, uh, it was a mom and dad with, I don't know, there were at least four kids. And they were musicians. And uh, so I found out about that and we arranged to open up the sanctuary one evening with them. And we, the, the drum set was in there, the piano, and we pulled out the electric guitars and basses and everything. And, and I and their family just spent probably an hour just playing music. And they were a church family, so we knew quite a few songs together. And it was just really, really neat. Uh, we connected with lots of families and lots of so we're excited that uh, it is coming to PMC. I think it will be very good for our congregation. And I'll just share two quick stories on families that uh, were powerful for us. Um, one, there was a, a, a family that after they graduated and found their own housing, they just contacted us and said, can we come back and volunteer? They would volunteer at the day center, but then they also came back when our church hosted and they were evening hosts. And that connection just felt really wonderful that they uh, wanted to do that. There was another family, a single mom with five kids. Um, and just talking with her the very first evening when we were eating together, um, it was very, very clear that she was grateful beyond words for this space um, where she could come. But it was also, uh, she, she shared her story. She had been working, providing easily for her children. They owned their home. 
Um, but her, one of her middle sons had a mental health crisis and landed in the hospital, and she had to be there full time with him. And so she was paying people to care for her other four children while she was doing this. And it was a months long process. And in the process, she lost her home. And she ate up her savings. And um, she knew beyond a doubt that she was going to get back on her feet. But she was grateful for this period of a few months. Um, the fun twist on that story is she actually became director of our Family Promise program uh, a few <coughs> years later. Uh, and so, of course, she could relate on many levels. Um, but that was uh, probably one of the best experiences for us to see someone who had uh, the drive and knew uh, what she wanted to do. So, anyway, it's a great program. Yeah, so it's, it's like I said, it's been useful to have Bruce and Paula with us because they can help us conceptualize what it would look like here, how they had done it, and what might what pieces of that we can use for here. So um, we have some expertise in the church. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through this PowerPoint, and there's uh, at one point there's a video that we couldn't get embedded into here, so we'll leave, go to YouTube, and come back. But um, if you have burning questions along the way, feel free to raise your hand. It doesn't need to be that we wait until everything's over. Um, but at the end, we will have time for more <coughs> questions. Um, so, Family Promise is, their, their mission is to help families who are experiencing homelessness um, achieve independence and eventually move into housing. That's really the whole goal, um, through support and case management to move beyond homelessness into permanent housing. Um, the, it began in 1986 with a woman named Karen Olson who was um, from New Jersey, but she was visiting New York City, and she saw a few people on the street who were um, without housing, and she um, reached out to them and bought them some food, and she went back and continued to find them and visit them for a while, and then started to do that for more and more people that she saw in New York City, and then even back in New Jersey, uh, and then she decided there needs to be more. There needs to be some sort of resources available. There weren't enough shelters at the time. Certainly in her hometown in New Jersey, there were none. So she uh, pooled together with other churches and said, can we collaborate and create some sort of rotating shelter system? And that was called the Interfaith Hospitality Network, uh, which is actually a, still a fairly recent name. They didn't rename their, their name to Family Promise. Um, until 2003, so um, that's a that's an organization that's been well known for a long time, um, and so they created in 1986 the first rotating shelter system in that town in New Jersey, and then in '88 it went national because there were other cities that heard of that and wanted to do the same, and so they called upon her to help them start that in their towns, and it grew from there. Um, 2003, they changed their name to Family Promise because they wanted sort of a family focus and also um, the idea that all families have, have promise for the future. So a name change um, in 2013, they, and every year since, they've been a four-star rating on the Charity Navigator uh, rating, which is, these are the three um, pieces that get you that high rating that you have effective governance, that you're careful with your resources, and that you're transparent. So um, it's highly rated as an organization, nonprofit as well. Now there's over 2,000 affiliates. Affiliate is the term for like a, a chapter, like a local, like we are a family promise, Metro East is an affiliate. There are 200 around the country, and um, they estimate 125,000 people a year across the country are served. Um, these are sort of their, their core values that they uh, work on. So hospitality, uh, what's unique about our model as opposed to just sort of big city-run shelters is that we are small, we have volunteers, we are in a church community, we have people who um, are, are devoting themselves. It's not just, even, you know, volunteers sometimes can have a flavor to it that can be more um, 
endearing and committal than those who are just paid to be there. So it really can feel like a hospitality um, kind of environment that churches offer um, in a way that some families really respond to rather than other shelter models. Um, there's a range of models that work, but we, we have a model that um, kind of has that hospitality layer in it. Um, empathy and, of course, reaching out to, you know, feeling the needs of people without judgment. Um, community, of course, it's, it's a wide range, uh, you know, it's a network of churches together. So you get to know even the other churches and you're working together. Um, dynamic in that it, dynamic and innovative, meaning it's changing, it's evolving. There are some affiliates that have expanded into food pantries and other programs and have sort of taken upon themselves to do more. So that that happens, and then empowerment. So that's really empowering the families to um, move beyond where they are now into something else, and based on their goals and. Um, inspiring them to make choices for themselves that are going to fit their family. Um, these are statements of equity that uh, they have posted on their website. That I thought was just, I won't read through this, but they're, they, they think about um, I, concepts of racism and how to make sure as an organization that they are mindful of that. Um, also, in terms of equity, there's there's no discrimination. The, the goal really is are those who are over the age of 18 with custodial arrangements of those under 18. And beyond that, people can define the family as it is. So it can be multi-generational, gay, lesbian families, like any range, there's no discrimination on that. Um, so these are the sort of services that happen. So shelter, certainly. And then a day center where families go in between their overnights. Case management happens at the day center with a case manager who will help them look for permanent housing as well as any other things they need that will help stabilize them. So if they need medical care, appointments, places, that case manager would arrange for all of that. Um, community connection. So that's the piece of churches being connected together, working together. Um, stabilization is just the big picture of one's life, the family's lives, moving into more of a stable uh, situation. And then awareness. Through working with churches, there's a growing awareness that those churches and the wider community have about homelessness and, um, and the needs of that. So here, now we're gonna look at a little video.
to not have a place to live is just unimaginable. I just want to do anything I can to help. There is no greater act of courage than going to the community and saying, we can't do this by ourselves, we need your help. Everyone is pitching in their time and their energy and their expertise to people who live right next to them and they're treating them like a neighbor. That's really encouraging. Family Promise. They always wanted people to get involved and to make a difference and to think that close to a million people have been involved as volunteers since we began. It's just incredible. So if we can provide togetherness and safety for families who are going through this stressful experience, then I feel like we are really creating a sense of home for someone who doesn't have a home right now. Family Promise helped me feel safe again. They offered me self-worth. They helped me find that I was capable of regaining a home, regaining our life, regaining a feeling of security. Changing the trajectory of one child literally can change the trajectory of a generation, and I think that's why our work is so important. I'm trying to be a singer when I grow up. I don't know. I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to be a scientist or a singer. I know. <laughs> So the, the model, and we've talked about this many times, so, so you're familiar with this, but the model is that it's rotating among congregations, so ideally 13 host congregations would be in an affiliate and each would take four weeks of the year. Churches can choose to take more than four if they want. Um, so it's overnight, that's evening into the next morning, and then during the the day, they go to a day center and there's transportation in between each. And at the day center, um, they're able to uh, get case management, kind of a home base where they would hang out and be um, have a place where their kids can nap, their kids can play, and they can go off in and out from there to job interviews or wherever. So it's sort of their home base besides their overnight. Um, so, but at the, at the overnight shelter, so it's overnight, volunteers are used from the churches. Um, it provides dinner at night, breakfast the next morning, and then sack lunches to take um, at the day center. It's a home base, case management offered, and a wide range of services there. And each affiliate has at least an executive director and a case manager as the two paid staff, two full-time staff. Um, that's what we will start with. Some affiliates grow and have more, but we are aiming for um, to work with those two staff. Um, so our local Family Promise Metro East is what we are called. It's um, the east side of Portland is what we're focusing. So not West Side Churches and not even far out to Gresham, but just sort of northeast and southeast. Um, just to keep it sort of small so there's not too much moving around. And it, it began, it sort of evolved out of, if you remember Common Cup, which we had volunteered with years ago, at that time we were affiliated in a general sense with another shelter called Daybreak, which was also a rotate, it was a rotating model, similar to Family Promise, but just its own entity. And it, um, Portland Community of Christ Church was one of those churches. And it closed around the time the Common Cup closed, but Becky Lee, who helped coordinate it for her church, wanted to see it continue in some way and had heard of Family Promise as an option and so has been working ever since then to sort of shift back into that rotating shelter that her church had been a part of and do it with Family Promise. Family Promise being a bigger entity than what the other previous shelter had been. So in a sense, we're sort of, this is like the next evolution from Common Cup that we had worked with. Um, and so about three or four, about three years ago, Britt came to me. She, she went to Britt, suggested this idea. Britt came to me. I talked to Becky, and it grew from there for PMC to be involved. 
Um, so I was I joined an advisory board, which was just sort of consultation board of churches that were interested, and that morphed into when we decided to be an official affiliate. Now I'm on the board of of that. Um, so we now have nine host churches. We're aiming to get uh, three or four more. We have some that are interested, that are likely. And we also need 26 support congregations because the hope is that each host church would have two support churches that would be linked to them, that would send volunteers as well to that, those host nights. And right now we're low on that. We only have four, but we have several others interested, but we do need to grow in terms of the host churches. The churches that PMC will be working with that have ex expressed an interest in being matched with us is Reedwood Friends is a, is a support church, and then Ministerios is also a support church. So when we volunteer, we will be getting volunteers from those places, which would be a nice way to get to know those churches better. Um, our affiliate, we now have 100000 in funds. We need um, probably 180000 would be a year's budget. So we are still fundraising. Um, we have just been given by the Joint Office of Homeless Services is, is giving us 50000 a year for three years. So that will help a lot. Um, and, but still more fundraising to go. What this does not count is rent assistance that will also be needed because you can't move out of shelter if you can't pay for housing, and many of these families don't have enough to pay the high cost of housing in Portland. So we're going to be doing also a separate fundraising fund for rent assistance, um, which could need as much as 50000 a year for the families that we'll have. So definitely need more fundraising to happen. Um, the day center is at Portland Community of Christ, so that's on Cooch, just past 47th, just behind, if you can picture the police station's tra uh, traffic transit um, division there, it's right behind that. Um, and it's temporary until our new day center, which is down on Chavez, is being built, but we're not sure when that will be built. So it could be two or three years that it will be at Community of Christ. Um, we're hoping to start July 1st as a fiscal year. That's when our grant from this, the uh, county will happen. So that's our goal, but it all depends on if we have a director by then or not. Um, these are all the churches that are currently host churches that um, have signed on. And like I said, there are a few more that will likely sign soon. Um, this is our local committee for here for Portland Mennonite Church. So we're here now. Um, so this is what a schedule for overnight would look like. So families would be transported from the day center to here at around 5, get here between 5 and 5.30. We'll do dinner at 6, then there's a hangout time, try to have folks prepare for bed at 9, do lights out at 10, wake up at 6 in the morning, um, start offering breakfast around 6.30, and then leave between 7 and 7.30. Some families will be up and be doing lots and sit down and eat. Some families will just get up right before, right before 7, grab something and go out the door. It doesn't matter. There's no like set. Everyone needs to come for breakfast. Um, on Saturday mornings, we at some affiliates, and this would be open to churches if they feel willing, to let, and depending on what's happening at that church that morning, to let Saturday be a little more of a lax time, like a little more sleep in, and maybe not make people leave at seven, but it might allow transportation to happen a little later, and make it be more of a nicer breakfast morning. Um, so that's up to each host church, but that's an option. And so the whole setup would happen Sunday after church, on what beginning of the week, and then clean up after it be done, hopefully by 9 is our goal, so that by the time Sunday school happens, everything's cleared up. Um, so that's what a schedule generally may look like. Any, any questions about that? Because that's the nuts and bolts. Like, we can get into more details later, too. Um, so as far as what volunteers would do, so the setup on Sunday after church, Bruce and Paula 
are will be our like ring leaders on that, and so we'll we'll need helpers around that. It'll just be like after church before you go, come on down and help set up the the mats and get things going. And then uh, each night, they, we are gonna look for people to prepare dinner. So that could either be come here to the kitchen and prepare a dinner and serve it, or prepare a dinner, leave other people come in and serve it, or prepare a dinner at home, bring it, drop it off, and it'll get warmed up and served. So it could be any, any arrangement of how dinner is made. Um, but with that, then there'll be at least a couple people to serve. So again, that could be the same dinner people or it could be another set of couple people. Um, and then overnight, a couple people to hang out, uh, or a couple people hang out in the evening, and then a couple more for overnight. People could do more than one. Someone could say, I'll just hang out in the evening and I'll stay overnight. It's not that um, these are exclusive job slots. People can sign up for more than one. Um, sometimes, uh, like a small group might say, we'll take a night, you know, and let, let different people of, the, of that group do the different nights and just like sponsor a night. That would be fine. Or a family or um, however people want to sign up. And then in the next morning, there would be breakfast set out. That could be a different set of people. If some people need to leave and go to work, it may need to be another couple people to come in and do breakfast, or it could be the same overnight folks that just stay and do breakfast. But that's setting out options and setting out stuff that people, pe families can make a sack lunch to take with them. So it's not a big serving, but it's more like set out and be available. Um, and then we would clean up that Sunday morning, so we'd need more volunteers to help with that. And we would also then be doing laundry through the week. So all the sheet sets that we've had out for the, in, on the mats, we would you know, then probably send people off with different amounts, whatever they feel like they can launder at home and bring back, and then we would store before our next post week. So that's sort of a, a quick overview. Um, any questions around that, though, and Bruce and Paula have helped us conceptualize what this looks like. So they might be able to answer questions too. Yeah. Um, this is a really, very generous program. I'm really glad that we're part of it. Um, but I read someplace for the hangout time, there are couches, and this is a great place to play soccer, but we don't have any couches. Will there be additional furniture brought in, or how does that work? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think maybe she's thinking about couches at the day center. Oh, where you, were you saying mean, we you were mean just the, the evening yeah. hanging out here yeah. where people will sit around? So they'll sit around these chairs, I guess. Yeah. Okay. The table. Yeah, I mean, we'll have tables out, so it'll, you know, have games. So the couches are at the day center, that sort of yeah. makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I don't think we'll have and we have tables, yeah. couches here that we'll bring out, but yeah. Um, yeah. I did, I did this at a church in Michigan, and there was also another group of volunteers who, after breakfast, took kids to school, people to work, and people to the day center. So it's kind of like a transportation committee. Right. Cer certainly volunteering can happen beyond these overnights and the day center will be looking for volunteers. Um, those sort of things will land in the in the sphere of the day center. Um, we're looking at having some sort of ride share system where we can get people transportation to places and appointments and things. Um, so yeah, so that, that may evolve too, that people can volunteer and help Any other, any other yeah. I'm, I'm curious about the, the, I know we had talked just like with um, SNMS and like the, the spaces, like which spaces right. are going to be used. Yeah. And, yeah. So we have a, yeah, oh, that's coming. we have another, gotcha. we'll go through okay. like the whole blueprint of the building. Okay. Um, but as far as a schedule goes, any, any questions on there? Um, so as far as volunteers, so we there will be a training that will happen for everyone before they volunteer that the affiliate will sponsor or we as a church will sponsor. There will be um, training everyone will have. Everyone will need to have a background check, um, just as Sunday school. You know, it's, it's children, and we're not 
going to necessarily be alone with children. We're expecting parents to still parent their children and not leave their children alone. So it's not babysitting, and we're not taking kids off to room to do crafts separate from parents or any of that. But you just never know when you might be end up somewhere with children, and we just want everyone background checked. Um, so we do after we have over here um, forms to fill out because all that we have a new. The church has a new background check system, and all our previous background checks are no longer valid, so all new ones need to be made, and they last for three years. So it's, and they're probably were expired anyway. So yeah, so we're just gonna get everyone newly background checked. It take, it's very quick to run it. So once it's done, it's just you're in the hopper. It's not a bad idea to do it for any, any events that we have here at PMC as well. So afterward, if you want to fill that out, we can just start to put people, if you feel like you're going to volunteer, go ahead and do that. Um, we will, before leading up to our host weeks, we'll have a binder in the old chapel, chapel that will have all the different um, duties that are needed per night, and you can just sign up accordingly, so there'll be ways to sign up easily. Um, Here's the space, so as Lisa was asking. So this is our blueprint um, that was created when we remodeled, and we're right here. Um, so that the space, so the whole um, preschool area won't be touched, so all those rooms in there that sort of make an L right here will be doored off when they, when they are done, even, even during the day, even though they're set up, they still can slide their stuff in and close the door and it's all it's all doored off and there's just a hallway right there. So that none of that all stay set up but it'll be doors and no one will touch that. So our space um, will be certain bedrooms each family would have. So one would have this this one over here, Sunday school room, um, that Sunday school room over there. Then so that's easy for two families. The third family we're thinking here with this curtain, curtain, and we're thinking of figuring out some sort of little uh, room divider to put there to have a curtain because the preschool does walk through during the day to go to the playground. So, but there'll be some division here. If we have four families, because it's three, three to four families that we may have, then the nursery would be sort of the fourth overflow room. Um, or, if it's a small family, the, the library in here could be the this, this spot because there's also a, you know, a divider we can put there. So it's, it's a little bit um, flexible in terms of depending on how, how many families we have. And then hosts overnight can sleep, um, which would be either, you could be together, like if you're a couple and want to sleep in the same room, that's fine. Or if you want to be separate, at least one host needs to be down below. The other could be upstairs would be fine. So one host could be here if that's available, and the other one upstairs. There's there's options. So um, each week will be a little bit flexible in terms of where it is, but none of it will affect the rest of like the preschool and other things that are happening. Um, so here's here's a question people come up with around building usage. So with Sunday school. It'll be cleaned up by Sunday morning. It won't be happening at the same time, so we can still use those rooms. Um, the preschool, we've talked with them long, long ago. Britt had lots of conversations with them, and we determined that it felt fine for them to have their space, you know, the doors, and we, those would just be off limits. Um, so no overlap of being in the building at the same time. For other groups that happen during the week, if the space is needed, you know, it's it's one week, so we can sort of accommodate and figure out if another group needs to just meet upstairs or, or whatever. We can kind of work with that for the week if, if it's going to be an evening activity um, or adjust if there's evening activities that we just need to plan ahead and just pick a host week that isn't going to have a lot of use in the building. That's fine too. So it's all the way that we remodeled our building is nice because it does allow for that separation allows for the preschool to have separate rooms as opposed to before so it it's a fairly workable setup but any any questions on that because i've had a lot of people ask specifics on building sharing and usage you might yeah. have mentioned this earlier but does, does the week start on like sunday evening yeah, so Sunday at 5 until the next Sunday morning at 7. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just 
just confused. So the overnight volunteer is one can go upstairs, and then where does the other one sleep down here? So it, the nursery, um, because yeah, the, generally the nursery, okay. but we might need that for for depending on the what we need to do yeah. over here. So we our original plan, Britt and I worked through this, is that this would be two families and we'd have a divider. Yeah. Um, because the kids have to walk through, the preschool has to walk through to go to preschool, we don't really want them like having to trace through other people's stuff. And so we'll need to do some sort of divider space between the library and here so there's a walkthrough. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's generally what we're doing. It's just that nursery is like overflow. So, so if, if we have overflow over there, then where does the person saying down here? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, library. here, I mean, you know, it, it's. Oh, and those rooms over there. Okay. Yeah, the library, yeah. There's, I mean, again, it's like flexible. Right. Uh, and the comic cup, we just slept on the stage. Yeah, it was just in the room. <laughs> just just room. So, you know, it's on the floor. It's a shelter, it's, and they actually have quite a lot of space, so it could just, I mean, yeah. we'll have, yeah. we'll figure it out. But. Yeah. 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 yeah, we've done it before in the church I came from. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Okay, so what is all next? So we're planning for our first host week, which we don't know when that will be, summer or falls at some point. Our committee is working on that. Um, so what you can do is think about volunteer, or what we outlined, uh, outlined here, if there's anything that you especially are interested in, just be aware of what's available for later when signups happen. You can do your background check now and have that on file. Um, we are collecting donations for several things. One for our local um, uh, hosting here, so blankets, sheets, pillows, towels, uh, and the, there's a, a bin up, we're setting up two bins upstairs. One is for that, for, for here, and we have a spot that we're storing that. The day center is looking for uh, also a number of donations. So we now have a registry with Target, which has a whole host of things on there. A lot of them are pretty inexpensive, whether it's um, like stuff for kids, like baby gear and art supplies, office supplies, any number of stuff that is going to be needed across the day center. So that, there's a way you can just do it online and, and it gets mailed, or you can go in and shop and you can bring it to me and we'll have a bin upstairs of stuff you can put in. Um, so lots of, lots of options and needs around that. So I'll, sh I'll show you later about the registry. And then we're also looking for, for the day center for furniture and computer equipment. Um, furniture, there's a few select items like a sofa and a, and a coffee table and a couple desks and things like that. So, and I've already been starting to get some donations on that. So if you have things that you want to discuss with me, feel free to do that. Um, we're also looking for books and toys and games, um, and that can be any range of good, good quality children's books, not just children's stuff, but like teen and adult novels. So at the day center, we have plenty of bookshelves, and we're gonna want to, want to fill things with books for people to use and take and have or bring back, or you know, a range of options for reading and toys and good condition games, things like that. So. There, there are two bins that we're setting up upstairs, one for what's going to be here at PMC and one for day center donations. Um, and then, yeah? How about cribs and pack and plays and high chairs for babies? Yeah, so we are, we're going to do pack and plays there so that we can move around. So if one family wants to take, you know, if kids need to nap separately because yeah. one's crying, we'll have movement. So yeah, we're not doing cribs, but pack and plays. But we won't have them here. Um, we probably would like a couple pack and plays here too, yeah. just for babies. So that'll, yeah, that's always useful. Um, one thing I'll, I'll point out is that you can pick up is a whole flyer that we've made of all of all of this, which talks about the registry and how to find that, and more details on exactly what furniture we're looking for and the types of games and books and all. Um, so this is a whole like donation flyer for the day center. Um, last thing to know is that April 28th is the National Day of Giving. That's a national organization for all nonprofits that Family Promise participates in. We'll have an online link that uh, you can give.
give to, it's just monetary donations. We did this last April and PMC had a bangbuster uh, response. We, we gave more than any other church in the affiliate did and probably half the amount that was raised in that fundraising event came from PMC. So thanks everyone for that. Um, but we're gonna be joining that again this year. So that is, that's all that. I'm gonna show the registry real, real quick. Um, oh, one last thing. The things that we need at the affiliate is we need more, more board members. We have six, we need 12. Um, the six of us have been like doing a heck of a lot, but we need more, more people. Um, once we have a director, that will really help in terms of the workflow, but having 12 will allow for more um, spreading out of the work. And so if you're interested, I'd be happy to talk with you more about what that looks like to be on board. Um, we're also looking for an IT person who can be sort of help us, one, when we set up the day center with the electronics to like know how to help us set that up but then also be available as, you know, things go wrong, like we can call to come in and help. So if you know of anybody who might want to volunteer to be our IT person, then great. And then we also need drivers with trucks or the furniture donations. So we've been getting people who say, I have a sofa, but I have no way to get it to you, and none of us have trucks on the board. So if you have a truck and you're willing to help pick up stuff and drop it off, we can arrange, you know, a time to do that, or if you know people with trucks, um, so those are things, and then here is, so I'm just going to walk you through it. You can pick out your, take out your phone or not or whatever, but on your phone, if you go to the familypromisemetroeast.org, which is the local affiliates website, created by Kurt, he's been our like, website guy. Um, up in this corner are these drop downs, and you would pick how can you help. It would look like this, but then you scroll down and then you see uh, basically that flyer on here all about donating. Um, and you would click donate to the day center. And then from there, there's a target registry where you can go right into it. Uh, there's also information about the furniture that we're looking for, books and games. Once you're on the registry, it will look like this on your phone. On a, on a desktop, it won't show the QR code, but on your phone it will. So if you were to be walking around the store, you can select what store you're in, what target you're in, and it will actually tell you what aisle a certain item is in, and you can find it, and then when you go check it out, you scan your QR code and it goes to our registry. It's pretty, it's pretty nifty. So that's how you would do it on your phone. Yes? Go back. Yeah, yes, not donate, that's more like pay money. This is how you can help and it will go to the Beth Day Center. So the, any any questions? Now we can open it up to yeah. How do the families get um, screens? Yeah. How, how do they get into the program in the first place? Yeah, that's a good question. So it will be through two one one access, which is the uh, two one one which is the resource referral number that any city has. The reason that we're gonna use that exclusively is because the grants that we are given from the county requires that. They won't, we, we initially had these grant ideas that we'll have two in one, but if we happen to know somebody, we'll just slip them in two and it'll be sort of organic of who we bring. The county won't allow that. It has to be like fair and just through two in one and so if you know of anybody, they would call 211. Because what 211 does is it, it knows all the, all the shelters. So there are three other family shelters that are full, like big, fully staffed, 24-hour shelters. And so a family could get referred to us or referred to any of those other three. And um, also other resources around housing and other, you know. So it's this whole big coordinated access system. And so those names would get sent to the director then they would come in and meet with the director, and um, the director would do a little more screening because we want people to be, first of all, know domestic violence in the, in the home, that's a different set of shelters, um, no active drug or alcohol use, they could be in recovery but not actively using. Uh, so just a couple things the director would sort of screen out, and then 
and then they'd be put on our list. So, so as a host church, we don't do any screening. There's no like people showing up at the doors trying to figure out if they should be there or not. We would get told the names from the from the director. Yeah. I know there's at least one other chapter on the west side. Um, does, this probably doesn't, but do you know when people, do they try and keep people in the county that they're kind of, yeah, it's in, really, like, so they're not moved out of their general? Right. It, this would all be like that two and one is all for our county. Okay. There is a fan, there's three other family promises in the metro area Tualatin, Beaverton, and Clark County. Those are separate. Those are holes, like not a very Wilmer County. We're, we'd be the only one in Wilmer County. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Or how do you all feel about this? Is this feeling exciting? Is it feeling daunting? Is it? Looks um, great. You did a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's been. I think it'll be great to put to this place that we fixed up. You know, right. for this purpose, and then the pandemic hit. It would be wonderful to to be start utilizing the space. Yeah, the I think so. Again. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot to offer here. So. Yeah. yeah. Where will all the equipment and furniture be stored? Yeah. So we right now there's a storage room off of the junior high study school room. If you are upstairs and you go up those little stairs, there's a little room, and then there's a I had no idea it existed. There's like closets I've never heard of in front here, but <laughs> off there is a closet. <laughs> and that's where our stuff is right now. We're still trying to figure out like once we have mats and things, you know, more bedding will take more space. We're, we're still figuring out where all that will be stored. But. It could be the room divider. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other other questions? If before you leave today, we have time, uh, come fill out one of these. It's just a really if you're interested, no obligation, but um, the the um, background check form is really simple, and then you can put it in a folder and leave it here, so it's separate. And Kurt is the one that will run them, and then this is our flyer about donations. So the people that help you set up the center, you can get some kind of science Yeah, we've had. Um, a few work weekends and Lisa and Bruce and Paula and Kim and Sylvia have all been there different days helping to paint. We have most of our painting done, a little more to do, um, and then and then it'll be like fully, you know, furniture and like designing. So we are um, we're getting donations from Home Depot. One of the people on our board works at Home Depot, so she's been able to get supplies. And we now are between, we've run out, we're getting more, and so we're hoping in a couple weeks we will have more, and then we'll have more more work days. So if you're interested in helping, let me know, and I can let you know when the next time is that we will get together there on a Saturday. Yes, it is daunting. <laughs> it is, but it's, do, it's all, it's all do, it's one, it's you know, it's one week. And then a few time off and then another reason. You know, mm -hmm. So we do it in pieces. I mean, you're done now just to get it all. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris, Kristen can just imagine, like, all my time. I'm like, anyways, yeah. Thank yeah. you for all your work. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I was just going to ask about liability insurance. Is it through the organization or does um, PMC's liability insurance cover it? Um, that the church has some, I don't know where Ron left, but yes, there's some that we have, the organization has some liability insurance as well, so both, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, thank you all, and if uh, you have more questions, I'm around, feel free to ask me anytime, and I'm welcome for any of this if you like, and thanks. <laughs>